in today's college football now with the transfer portal, how do you balance the need to build your program for the long term with high school players, uh, keeping them in your program for four years versus winning right now by maybe going and grabbing more transfers and, and winning immediately? Because there's the balance of, of all that. you got to wait now yeah. with, with the portal. Well, I, th- I think you win with, rela- with relationships. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing. And I think the only way you build a relationship is long term, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, if you every year you, you'll have another wife and I'm going to go marry <laughs> another girl, I'm gonna, you know, like, how, you know, how's your life going? And, you yeah. know, and you think you might win for, for a month <laughs> or a week. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I, we're going to build our program with high school players and we'll mm-hmm. supplement it with a transfer. Most of the transfers we bring in are guys that we recruited the first round mm-hmm. that kind of go, gosh, coach, I made a mistake. I'm coming back. I mean, yeah. MJ, MJ Devonshire being one of those guys that finally came back, kid from Al Quippo who's going to be an NFL player and, you know, had a great year for us last year. He's going to be even better this year. But just one example of a guy that came back home and whether it's, you know, a kid from Pittsburgh or if it's a kid from California that mm-hmm. came back to us, um, it, you know, we're going to re-recruit those guys if they end up going in the portal. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to tamper with them. I guarantee, yeah. guarantee you that. <laughs> well, that was my next question. So, uh, NIL in, in the portal. So, I, I think – a lot of people agree, and you probably would too, that NIL at what it was meant to be is a good thing, right? Players can make money. It's, it's good. Real, where the really bad combination comes is NIL combined with the transfer portal when it's used in, uh, you know, in to get kids to, to switch schools. Honestly, when I think back to the NIL portal era, it started here with one of your players, Jordan Addison, who left to go to USC. Uh, that was the first big moment I remember in that era where people were talking about NIL and the portal uh, mm-hmm. and what it really meant for college football. Two part question. Number one, what do you think of it, the combination and, and how, how you've seen it play out in college football? And then what can be done to fix it? Whew, well, we're trying to fix it. Um, <laughs> you know, it, again, it, it can be, you know, it can be an issue, yeah. uh, obviously. And I think everybody's got their own issues. You know, we're trying to hold on to our guys um, and, and try to, you know, just to me, it's like we've done a great job of not losing guys mm-hmm. that we really want to keep here. If a kid wants to play, it's like, and it's better, he's not going to play here. Then the portal is good for those guys, mm-hmm. but when when the tampering happens and guys are coming to steal your guys is when that's when it gets bad, mm-hmm. you know. And it should be able to go in the portal because someone's offering you more or, or you know wants to you know throw around a different color yeah. jersey or logo um, to entice you to go to their school and you know players recruiting you because a coach told you to to go recruit a guy because of a need. Yeah. Uh, so that that's when it gets bad, and I, I don't know how you fix it. Um, it it's it's difficult. I mean, I think certainly. Um, you know, shortening the windows for when these guys can go into portal. I mean, probably 85% of the kids decide in the first seven days when that portal opens. So why do we need 14 yeah. or 21 days or 30 days, you know, just to drag out for a coach? It'd be nice to at least, if a, if a kid's not happy, and I talked about it, if a kid's not happy, I don't want him here anyway, yeah. you know? So I want guys to be happy and, and you know, there, there, there's too many unhappy kids throughout the country. If they are not happy, they probably need to find another situation. But my number one priority is make sure our kids are happy here, and we're not losing them. And really, besides you know Jordan Addison, we've been pretty fortunate with the portal. We, we're not yeah. you know you lose one great one, and again, one of Belitnikov here at Pitt, and and uh, you thought you did everything right for him, and he was happy, and, um, and then all of a sudden one day you know yeah. he's not, which went on for months as far as just the recruiting process. So um, the, the important thing is, I think you control the portal by making sure you have a good culture. And we start yeah. off the conversation with the culture. Um, and just making sure you're doing things right there where nobody wants to leave, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, I'm sure our guys have been, been offered money to leave here, but, you know, it ha- they haven't walked in my office and, and leveraged that against me yeah. uh, because they're happy. And that's that's how you control it is, is have a happy house. Yeah, and then a lot of times the players, I talk to a lot of guys who go somewhere thinking they're going to make a lot of money and they actually don't, right? <laughs> I mean, have you seen the same thing? Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's a... There's a lot of stuff going around, and you know, I'll relate it back to you know when my dad was coaching. There was a lot of lying going on years and years ago, yeah. probably before I got into coaching. Um, and I'm sure maybe in my early years of you know just the, the, the you know the lying that went on. Well, now with social media, it's hard to you know you, if you're you're not telling the truth and telling it like it is. Yeah. I just think kids become unhappy when you get there, you know. Yeah. And I think probably one of the biggest lies always was you know where coaches would tell kids, "Hey, you're going to come here, and you're going to be a starter as a freshman," right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, see anybody's, yeah. Guaranteeing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. anybody's guaranteeing you that, you know, it, it is bad. And then all of a sudden yeah. you get there and you're not starting. How you feeling? How, you know, how's, how's that relationship with you and that coach now? So I think, you know, it, it starts, you know, it starts with that. But, um, you know, it's, 
it's a difficult deal to juggle. But just if you take care of your house and the details of what you do and how you run your program, you should be okay. You know, I, I had Kenny Pickett on the on the this podcast, and we were talking about NIL, and he talked about staying at Pitt his whole career and how you know he was having a lot of success. And if if Kenny would have entered the portal at any point, his market value goes up exponentially just because of the the potential for schools to come take him, right? And Kenny was talking about that difference of, you know, if you stay at a school versus getting in the portal and, uh, and you know, the commitment he had for Pitt. What do you think it's been that's allowed you to keep guys consistently from hitting the portal and then maybe if they did keep them at, at school longer? You know, I think it's, again, it comes down to, you know, that culture and, yeah. the, and the happiness that these kids are having while they're at that program. And, you know, Kenny never, you know, he never wavered at all. It was yeah. never a conversation where I think I'm going to, you know, to me, it's generational wealth. You're yeah. all looking for that. You're not going to, you know, not make a living with this yeah. name, name, image, and likeness. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, Kenny became a, he's a legacy player here. I mean, he'll walk yeah. through the doors, you know, in, in 20 years, like, you know, like Tony Dorsett and Larry Fitzgerald and, and Aaron Donald. He's one of those. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. when you leave, you lose all that. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you never have a home to go back to. And, and that's something that I sell all the time with the guys is, is it, this is your home and you want to make the best of it. And I think anytime you change, you know, it's no different than changing a playbook, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and leaving for whatever reason. And it, it just slows down your progress and your development. And yeah. Kenny stayed another year and he could have popped to the NFL the year before and, yeah. and maybe been a third or fourth rounder, but he became a first rounder and, and he's set for life. And that's, that's yeah. the key. And he could have, you know, raised, you know, what you said, his, his status, I guess, in college football by leaving and, and being one of those guys that was going to be a great quarterback somewhere else, and I, hey, I did a great job at Pitt and go somewhere else, but you know, he, he what, what you would he yeah. been a first rounder? Yeah, you know, maybe yeah. not. That's great. Who point. knows? Yeah. Real quick, I want to let you in on a secret of how I keep my face so clean. Our sponsor, Caldera Lab, has changed the game for me with their skincare products. Skincare isn't just for girls anymore, it's for the guys too. And if you're not on the skincare trend, what are you doing? I was never a big lotion guy until I got a little bit older. I'm 28 now, you gotta take care of the skin. Caldera Lab came to my rescue and I've never felt better. I love Caldera Lab and now you can too at calderalab.com slash Adam B for 20% off.